Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Pamela, and you are watching Pam Entertainment TV, where we review movies, television series, and incidents in pop culture, just to see how those incidents affect our daily lives. Listen, we are here, and we are ready to go over season three, episode C3 of The Mandalorian, entitled Chapter 19, which was interesting. They gave it no big, big name. It's just Chapter 19. All right. Uh, if you have uh, this, if you're just joining me, uh, my name is Pamela, and this is Pam Entertainment TV. Uh, we are re we review movies and television series. Today we are reviewing again The Mandalorian season three, episode three. If you like what you see, please hit that like button. Also, if you want to see any other uh, review that I have done on my channel, hit subscribe and then go through the plethora playlist of the things that I am reviewing. Uh, the Mandalorian is one of the episodes from the Star Wars franchise that I am going to be reviewing. I watched it on my own because I like it, but I thought I'd watch it and review it uh, for better engagement and to see what you all think about it. All right, let's go. So the last last week at the end, we uh, we left Din Djarin, Bo-Katan, and um, Grogu in the minds of Mandalore. And... Uh, <laughs> Din Djarin did his uh, ritual, which ended up sinking him down to the bottom of the uh, mine. Bo-Katan had to jump in and go get him. Uh, once she jumped in and go get him, and as she was coming up, because Din jumped in, I didn't realize that Din jumped in and didn't have his backpack on. And I guess when he hit the water, he just sunk like a, a, a rock. But... I'm curious, it, it, did the mythosaur bring him down? Because he he fell so hard and so quickly when jump, bo -Katan jumped in. You know, it took her a minute to get down there and get to him. But, you know, that was a little odd. So, like I said, they as bo -Katan was bringing Din Djarin up, she did see the mythosaur. So now let's start this episode. They're up, and you know, Din Djarin, he done got beat down to the, he done beat, he got beat down to the brakes by the, uh, Alamite. He got beat down to the brakes by that uh, cyborg uh, uh, Great Value Grievous. And now he got beat down. <laughs> he didn't got beat down by the living waters. Okay. So he is really, really weak at this point. And so he had to recover, wake up, recover. And so Bo Katan started asking him and quizzing him about. Um, did he see anything? Did he feel anything? Anything like that? So we can all we we all know right now that when when Din Djarin, when when the living waters of the mines Mandalore whooped on Din Djarin, it knocked him out. So he didn't see nothing. He didn't feel nothing. He don't know nothing. So Bo Katan is the only one with the knowledge that the Mythosaur is down there. Now, I think Grogu feels it. He just doesn't know what's going on. I think he can feel that there is something going on with uh, down there in those living waters. So as they get out, they go, they go, they start going back to uh, Bo-Katan's castle, and then a bunch of Tie Fighters come out of nowhere, which was interesting because I was like, where did they come from? How did they know uh, that they were there unless they had somebody or a probe or something? on Mandalore to make sure that nobody went back to Mandalore? Because here's why I asked that question. Because Bo-Katan is on her home moon and uh, uh, she's been there for a minute and nobody knew that she was there. They didn't bomb the moon. They didn't bomb, which was interesting to me. The Empire bombed up Mandalore, but they didn't bomb any of the other places or any of the other thousand uh, 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 planets that Mandalore ruled at that time. Curious, you know, I'm just curious about that. But nonetheless, as they were going back to Bo-Katan Bo Bo castle, the TIE fighters are fighting them. Uh, Bo-Katan and, and Din Djarin end up uh, besting the first five, but then they realize that there was like a whole squadron <laughs> a whole squadron of those TIE fighters. So they went into hyperspace. Uh, and then it cuts to 
Coruscant. We hadn't been to Coruscant in a minute. Matter of fact, as I can recall, when the last time I remember seeing Coruscant? Now, I haven't watched Bad Batch yet. Uh, I haven't gotten into that yet. I don't remember the last time I saw Coruscant. Anyway, we are on Coruscant, and it is now a bastion of uh, Republic honor, you know. Everybody's there. Everybody is loving themselves. You know, they are no longer the empire. They are the Republic and, you know, all of this, you know, just politics. Folks up here talking about, oh, well, we didn't, we were not part of the, um, the empire. And I couldn't have been a part of the empire knowing doggone well, whoever was in power, that's who you were going to be part of. You, you know, politicians trick, tickle me, child. They just fly wherever the wind is powerful. Anyway. We run into Dr. Pershing. Now, Dr. Pershing is in some type of real rehabilitation program, but he's also presenting his works, uh, what he was doing for the empire before the empire uh, broke down. So the last time we saw Dr. Pershing's was on uh, Navarro uh, in the in the. Uh, you know, in that little uh, laboratory that was on Navarro and that got torn down. So we had, I, I don't think we've seen Dr. Pershing since then. I don't, I don't remember if we've seen Dr. Pershing like that, but he has joined the uh, re rehabilitation program where they take former empire employees and uh, 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 I don't know, they act like they're addicts or something. And they're trying to, or they were in a cult. They, that's the way they act like. They act like all those people were in a cult. And so they are rehabilitating them out of the cult-like situations. I guess, John. I guess. So Dr. Pershing is there. And Moff Gideon's right-hand person uh, is in the rehabilitation camps. Okay? Uh, fun note, I just realized that she was the same woman in Ant-Man um, and the Wasp Quantumania, uh, she was the, the the freedom fighter girl. I just realized that was her. When I saw her, I was like, she looks too familiar to me. Where have I seen her before? Uh, but I actually seen her in, um, in this show. And then when I watched that, I knew she looked familiar. I just couldn't pinpoint her. So I just saw the Ant-Man not, not, not even a month ago. And so that's how it, it hit me. I said, like, oh, that's that lady that was in the Ant-Man series. Anyway. She is there, and uh, Dr. Pershing is, uh, he's in the rehabilitation center. Now, Dr. Pershing, his work is what's important to him. And so he is doing this rehabilitation in the hopes that he can continue his work. That's what's important to him, his work. He has been trying to get back to his work. He understands that the Caminos uh, have uh, cloned people before, thus the clones and the clone wars, and that he wants to, it sounds like what he wants to do is take DNA from one person, take DNA from another person, mix them together, and then grow a whole person. So he's doing some out of the womb experiments is what it looks like to me. I don't know how this galaxy or these, I'm assuming that they give birth, well, they do, because we remember we saw Padme give birth to Luke and, Luke and Leia. So I guess he is trying to not do uh, doing some organ um, organ growing because he talked about his mother, but I think also too he wants his work so that he can literally create just get the get the, you know create clone people, but take one clones person and another one put them together and make a whole new you know make a whole new person. That's what it looked like to me. That's what it sounded like to me. Well, the New Republic was interested in in their uh, information, but they were not wanting that information to go out. And so they basically told him, no, we're not going to be able to work on your research. So he is in a place, he's working um, in a place, I guess, where they are, are either declassifying information or any types of experiments or things like that. They are erasing them out of the databases. They don't want that type of uh, knowledge out in the public. A little dis dis 
that's a little concerning. I can see you putting it behind several different firewalls so people couldn't get to that information. But to do away with it, po with possibly being able to assist you uh, with the with the advancement of your people, that that seems a little harsh. Unless it's something that they feel like uh, uh, they didn't want it to get back in the hands of the the, 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 the loyalists of the empire. But I feel like if, if they're the loyalists of the empire, they pretty much have as much information as they need to be able to do inflict as much damage as they want to. But that's just me. But let's continue the story. And basically what happened on Corazon is that Moth Gideon's right hand and... Uh, Dr. Pershing are together and Dr. Pershing is really talking to her about wanting to continue the research. And so she gives him little cues and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't trust her really. I don't trust her. She seems to be odd because it's just too quick. She's just talking to Dr. Pershing and it's just really too quick. Um, so they get on a, they get on a, 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 a train and she's like, we could go to an old Imperial ship because basically they're just in the junkyard, they're junk. And if we go to the old Imperial ship, you can get the things that you need and you can continue your research. First, Dr. Pershing is not too happy about it, but then he decides, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, I'm, we're going to do this. I'm going to do this. So they do this little cat and mouse game with a droid on the train and they jump off the train. They're in the shipyard. They go to one of the destroyers. They go in. Uh, Dr. Pershing is getting the, the, the materials that he needs. Then all of a sudden the uh, Alliance uh, police uh, the uh, come and pick him up. And then we find out that uh, Moth Gideon's first hand has set him up. Then they take him to what looks like a medical facility. And the uh, the doctor is telling uh, Dr. Pershing, hey, uh, we know it's hard to transition out of the empire, so we're going to help you. And so they, uh, Dr. Pershing was freaking out because he said it was a mind flare. And so they're just going to go through and kind of wipe his mind a little bit so that he, uh, I guess they told him to, that he was going to relax. Basically, they're doing this shock therapy is what they were doing. And they left it to Moth Gideon's first hand to uh, be the person to uh, flip the switch. Child, she in there flipping the switch and turning the switch up higher than what the guy had said it. And she's just turning and she's eating them little cookies or whatever. Now, the cookies were important because uh, when um, Dr. Pershing uh, went back to his uh, rehabilitation center where he lived, and you remember I told you that's where he met Moff Gideon's uh, firsthand person, they were talking about what they missed about the, uh, the empire. And apparently they missed these certain type of biscuits. And somebody had knocked on uh, Dr. Pershing's door and dropped a boatload of those biscuits, a big tin of those biscuits, because that's what he said he missed because he liked those. And then at the end, when I told you she had cranked up the knob to really fry poor uh, Dr. Pershing's brain, uh, she was eating one of those biscuits. So you could see that she was the one that gave him those biscuits uh, at his front door. So we see now uh, well, uh, we see now that they are, they're trying to match the series, this series up with the sequels. And uh, because, you know, Palpatine lived again. So they're trying to match it up as to, I guess, to explain to us how they got to that. Child, they just let, they have not let J.J. Abrams, anyway. They could have told a whole new story, but anyway, so we see the steps of how they're going to do that, where they're going. So basically what we basically see as far as with the Mandalorians and Grogu, uh, I don't think that the Empire is going to have access to Grogu like they need to anymore because Grogu is about to, Grogu is about to be this Mandalorian. So let's get into this. So Din Djarin and Bo-Katan get back to the armor and that little covert of Mandalorians. And uh, you know that that uh, that Kreese, uh guy, he don't believe nothing nobody tell him. 
And so uh, Din Djarin says, well, I've been to Mandalore and I've bathed in the living waters and I have proof. So they go in and we see the armorer. And I thought there was I thought there was going to be some kind of recognition uh, with Bo-Katan knowing who the armor is, because that's such a uh, a heated question. Like, who is the armor? But the armor doesn't um because I'm thinking the voice or something like that will give it away. But uh, Bo-Katan is acting like she doesn't know. Uh, but it was so, let me tell y'all, it was just born my heart. Did y'all see little girl grew all amongst his people? He was just like, these my folks. They crazy as bad shit, but they my people. <laughs> he was so excited. He just looked so excited and happy to be amongst his people. I was feeling better. I just said, look at Grogu. He with his dad. He amongst his people. Everything is good for him. It's all good in the neighborhood for little Grogu at this point. He's out here doing adventures. He is learning. Everything is going pretty good with Grogu. So then Jaren goes to the armorer. He gives her the, uh, the the vial. She pours it in the thing and says, yes, these are the living waters. So she says that Din Djarin is no longer an apostate because um, Bo-Katan uh, vouched for him going in the living waters. And she said that she had to drop in the living waters. And so they said, well, she was like, well, you bathed in the living waters. She says, have you taken your helmet off? And she says, no, I haven't. And he says, she says, well, as part of the creed, you're an apostate no more. You are part of the clan. You can leave when you want to leave. That's not the issue. Uh, you leave when you want to leave, but just know that right now that you are no longer an apostate and you are part of the clan. And this is the way. And they all joined and got in. You know, I'm happy for Din because however we feel about the Death Watch, uh, he believes. So we don't have no choice but to believe. Now, it's interesting to me. That Bo-Katan has said nothing about the Mandalorian. I mean the Mandalorian, the Mythosaur. She hasn't talked about the Mythosaur. She hasn't mentioned the Mythosaur. She hadn't told Din Djarin about the Mythosaur. None of that stuff. So it's interesting to see uh, what's going to happen there. And that pretty much, what y'all, was the episode. Uh, again, with the Dr. Pershing, it was a longer episode uh, we just had to, I guess, go through all of this information with Dr. Pershing. I'm curious to see the mind flare. flare. I'm curious if he has, uh, how much of his mind has been blown, so to speak. Uh, I'm curious to see how he comes out of that. We do recognize that, uh, now I'm not sure about Moth Gideon's right hand. When I know her name, I'm going to say it, but I'm not sure about Moth Gideon's right hand. I think she is... Uh, playing two sides to the middle, whichever is going to serve her, whichever way she's going to be able to get a better deal. She's going to play both sides to the middle. I think she's probably going to get in contact with some of her old empire buddies and tell them that they got Dr. Pershing and what you want to do with him. She's going to bargain his life uh, back and forth. I think that's some, that that's the way I feel. Uh, this was a longer episode. It was a slower episode. We spent more time with Dr. Pershing on Coruscant than we did with the Mandalorians in the Covert. Uh, I am interested in what part of the Empire is still, uh, what part of the Empire is still out circling Mandalore? And why are they circling Mandalore? Why is it so important? Because the Mandalorians are scattered uh, hither to tither. Why is it so important that they're keeping the Mandalorians away from Mandalore? At this point, uh, it really wouldn't matter if they go back or not, unless unless there's some Beskar uh, still over there that they're trying to keep from um, the Mandalorians. But we don't know. Because that's that's been the interesting thing to me about what is going on that everybody is making this big, big thing about Mandalore and and they don't want the Mandalorians to go to go back I don't I'm not really feeling what's going on but again this is why we watch this show it it's moving on it's moving on because we are to expect there are just going to be some real spicy episodes action-packed and then we get episodes like this where there is just more 
information giving, world building type information and stuff like that. So it's character driven, but we're just getting piece by piece by piece because again, we are working towards the sequels. So because we need to figure out how uh, Palpatine and the the First Order was able to collect all of this information under the noses of the Republic. And you can kind of see how, because they spent so much time uh, glorifying in the pomp and circumstances of the New Republic that they were not paying attention as a government about what's going on with the old regime. They really didn't squash the old regime. They just um, broke down enough factions of it that uh, they thought that they had defeated it, but they haven't, uh, they don't, they know not what cometh. And plus, you know, we still got Admiral Thrawn running around out there. Ahsoka, you know, we're going to see that on her show, but you've got him in the background doing a whole bunch of stuff. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see what's going on there. But tell me how y'all like the show. I didn't want to make this too long. Uh, like I said, I don't want to make it this, this particular too long because it wasn't all that much information. Uh, well, Sorry, we got a lot of information, but it wasn't enough for us to to do, a, you know, a, a whole 30 minute review. So we're going to cap it right here. Uh, tell me what you think. Just chop it up down in the comments. What did you think about uh, Mando and his uh, uh, baptism? What do you think about uh, Bo-Katan hiding the fact that there's a mythosaur still living down in the, in the waters of Mandalore? Uh, what do you think about Dr. Pershing and uh, Moff Gideon's first officer? What do you think about um, what's going on with them? Do you think she's going to try to free Moff Gideon? Y'all let me know down in the comments. Again, my name is Pamela. This is Pam Entertainment TV. Uh, please like if you like this video. Thumbs up. Also, uh, please subscribe. Uh, I will be doing this every week until The Mandalorian is done. And as always, people, if you have no questions, if you have no uh, anything else, this, this stream is done. And as always, buh boy.